What's going on YouTube? Thanks for coming back to the channel. Today on deck, I've got the brand new Sony UBP X800 4K Blu-ray player. I'm gonna hook this up to the projector, go through the setup process, and see what kind of features it offers. But first, let's take a look at the packaging and see what's inside. Now with your purchase of the player, you do get two free movies through the promotion that Sony is running if you purchase this player. Now inside the box, you'll see there's a, a lot of foam packaging. Also a, a strap that's bound tightly together. Let's just get that off, voila. We have the instruction manual. The remote control that comes with almost every Sony Blu-ray player. On the front of the player, you have the eject button and only the power switch. On the rear, you have your ethernet port, two HDMI outputs, and a coax digital output. You get the RMT VB310U remote commander. Pretty much every Sony Blu-ray player comes with this remote. This player looks almost exactly like the UHPH1 Blu-ray player from last year. Only thing missing on the back was the two RCA outputs. Now this is set up process here. Basically, we're just gonna connect to our network, username, password. It takes a few minutes, but I've sped it up here. Make sure you agree to the terms and conditions. It's gonna download whatever updates need to be updated. Let's check out the setup menu. So I'm checking out the software update here, see if anything's updated or if it needs an update, but it's already been updated. Let's check out the screen settings. So we have HDR output, auto and off. Display type, TV or projector. I'm gonna select projector here. Output video resolution. Auto, original resolution, 480i, 480p, 720p, 1080i, 1080p, 4K. I'm gonna keep it on auto. This is 24p output. 4K upscale settings. So if you're running, so if you're watching a regular Blu-ray or DVD or video, whatever you have, it'll auto upscale for you. This is your color space. This is your HDMI deep color output. I'm just gonna leave both of those on auto. IP content noise reduction. I usually keep all this stuff off, so I'm just gonna keep it off. TV screen size. This is where you put in what size screen you're gonna be watching this on. Mine is 126 inches, 16 by nine screen or four by three. Screen format, normal or full. This is the cinema conversion mode. Just gonna keep all the stuff on auto. Let's back out, check out our audio settings. Digital audio output, auto or PCM. Keep it on auto. DSD output mode. Just gonna keep that off. Video audio. BD audio mix settings, just keep that on. DTS Neo 6, DSEE, that's their upscaling of sources. Down mixing, if you have surround sound, you want it to down mix the stereo or surround. Let's get out of here, check out the Bluetooth settings. Bluetooth mode on or off, how many pair of devices you have. Wireless playback quality. Probably not gonna use this player for that, just keep it on standard. Bluetooth output. It's kind of cool. You can use either Bluetooth headphones while using HDMI output in case two people are watching at the same time. Cool feature. Let's check out the music settings. Super Audio CD playback. Super Audio CD playback channel. Two channel, multi channel. We've never used that before, so I'm just going to keep it as is. System settings. Control for HDMI. I, us I usually keep that stuff off. I use the harmony to control my stuff, so I always turn that off. HDMI audio output. I have it hooked up to only HDMI 1, but I'll just keep it on auto anyways. Quick start mode is on. Keep that activated. Just hit the button. The 
player starts right up. All right, so that was just a quick unboxing and overview of the setup process. Now there is a function that a lot of people are looking forward to trying out, which is the HDR to SDR conversion. Basically it takes your HDR 2020 color profile and strips out the HDR and brings it down to a standard dynamic range with a color profile of Rec. 709. Now, I believe the Panasonic player takes the HDR from the 2020 color profile and strips out the HDR, but still keeps it the same profile, which is 2020 SDR. Unfortunately, this player doesn't do it. Also a main concern I did mention in the video was the lack of support for stretching vertically. If you don't have a video processor and you're using this with a projector with a stationary lens, you're always gonna end up with letterbox with letterboxing on the top and the bottom of your scope screens. So it's kind of unfortunate. So with a couple of movies that I tried it out on, I tried out The Revenant and I tried out Hacksaw Ridge. Image quality was just as good as Yapo. Audio quality is fine. It supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So immersive audio, you're covered for that as well. It plays back 3D Blu-rays. Plays back your regular CDs. Plays back high-res audio as well. It's a quality player, build quality, if you've handled the UHP H1, you know exactly what it feels like. Quality on the Oppo is a bit better. It's got a metal chassis on it. The Sony player's a bit plasticky feeling. I don't wanna say it's cheap. It's got some weight to it, it's got some heft to it. Unfortunately, it's not as premium feeling as the Oppo player. Although for $300, it's almost half the price as the Oppo player. Great image quality. It's a good player for $300. A lot of great features, great picture quality as well. Now, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys again in the next one.